Let's go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, today's Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021. The Gospel for today's Mass comes from St. Matthew, chapter 23, verses 1 to 12. Another very interesting gospel reading today. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. What does that symbolize, the chair of Moses? It means the teaching authority of Moses, right? The cathedra, the, the seat from which they teach it's a it's a symbol uh, to signify teaching authority so the scribes and the pharisees have accorded unto themselves a kind of authority to teach people okay what is good or bad basically so because they have done that our lord says here therefore do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you in other words, what they teach you to be good, obey that, right? But do not follow their example. Do not follow their example. Listen to what they teach you, but don't follow their behavior. Because there is no congruence between what they teach and how they live their lives. Okay? So here our Lord emphasizes to us the importance of giving good example. Not only mouthing good things, saying good things, but, you know, we have to live by what we teach and what we preach. Okay? We have to live by it. For they preach but do not practice. So there you go. They preach but do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to carry, and lay them on people's shoulders. But they will not lift a finger to move them. In other words, they impose so many rules on other people, but they themselves don't follow it. <laughs> it kind of reminds me uh, of the current situation we have in our own country right now, right? Governors would tell people of their state, well, you gotta wear masks. You gotta avoid going to restaurants to dine with other people. <laughs> but they themselves are the first ones to get caught violating their own mandates, okay? Because they only want rules for others, but not for themselves, okay? That shows you already what? Hypocrisy on their part. That's exactly what our Lord is talking about here. So our governors who imposed all of these mandates yet did not follow it themselves are hypocrites. And that's why our Lord calls these Pharisees hypocrites. They impose heavy burdens on other people. They themselves don't follow them. So he tells them, okay, obey what they tell you in terms of what they teach you to be good or bad, but don't follow their example. Now, all their works are performed to be seen. Ah, here's an important, very, very nice part of this. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. These are part of, you know, their phylacteries and their, their tassels, the, 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 what ties their robe together, you know. In other words, they're vain. They're vain. This is about their vanity. They love places of honor and banquets and seats of honor in synagogues. Greetings in marketplaces when they walk around. Okay. And salutation, rabbi, when they're called rabbi, teacher. They love that. In other words, 
They love praise. They love to be praised. They love to be admired by people. Okay? Well, as for you, don't let anybody call you rabbi. Uh, you have but one teacher, etc., etc. And our Lord continues to say, The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. But whoever humbles himself will be exalted. So there are two things in this gospel. One is the whole idea of giving good example. The second part of this is about pride. It's about the viciousness of pride. The vice which is called pride. Let's dissect the pride part a little bit more in depth here. Okay? What does pride mean? What is pride all about? Okay? Well, pride, pride, in summary, okay, makes us think too highly about ourselves. Okay? We, 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 uh, we think that we are a lot better than who we really are. That's one of the manifestations of pride. And um, because we think too highly about ourselves, we tend to be blind to the fact and to the truth that everything we have, including the things that we thought or we think we did ourselves, to ourselves alone, are really all gifts from God. Okay? Even the seed of the talent that you have in you, don't forget, is a gift from God. That very basic seed of a talent of goodness, even your good looks, are all given to you by God. And God gave all of these things so that you develop them, precisely so that you grow them, precisely so that you improve yourself through them. And therefore, to think that, you know, oh, all of these perfections, all of these talents, all of these good things I'm doing, I did them myself. I am a self-made man. You know, you'll hear a lot about, you hear that expression very often, a self-made man. Well, it's good. It's good, in fact, that you made something of yourself, right? And in fact, we should. That's part of why God gave us those talents. It's because we need to improve on them. We need to make use of them to improve ourselves, to develop ourselves. But let's not forget where they all came from. Let us acknowledge where they came from. And let's be grateful to God for giving us all of these very good things that will help us develop ourselves. But for what? For what? Why do we need to develop ourselves? Let us not forget that the end goal is always for the greater glory and honor of God. So that we reflect the perfections of God that he shared with us when he created us to be who we are. All that is happening here when we improve ourselves and work on the basic goodness and talents that God has given to us. All that's happening there is that we are reflecting the perfections of God himself. So let's learn to acknowledge that. Let's learn to be grateful for that. And let's work towards that end of giving greater glory and honor to God. And not pridefully think that, oh, this is just all me. It's me, I, me, myself. And all my goodness and all my perfections are my own doing and are my own uh, to, to enjoy and, and therefore, you know, it's all about I, me, myself. That is pride. The contrary virtue that fights that is the virtue of humility. And what is humility? In summary, humility is truth. It is the knowledge of who we really are all about. It is the knowledge of of where we came from. It is the knowledge of our real state in life. It is the knowledge of the real situation of our souls. 
okay, that without the grace of God aiding us all along, we would really be nothing. We would really not be able to do what we are doing without God continuing to sustain us in grace. That is the truth. And if we are humble, we will acknowledge that. We will understand that truth about ourselves and that truth about God's assistance and about God's grace. Only humble people know how to recognize that, recognize God's hand in everything that is good about them. Okay? That is humility. Okay, so let's learn the four the four aspects of humility that we can go a little deeper in this time of Lent. Okay? Number one, we have to recognize that we are broken and sinful creatures redeemed by Jesus Christ. And therefore, we are given the grace to be able to, to become saints, okay? to make the best of ourselves, and in the end, hopefully become saints. Okay? And we have to be humble to recognize that. We, ha we are broken creatures. We are sinful creatures. And we need a God to redeem us from this. And we need God to sustain us in grace so that we become saints. Even our own sanctity is not our own making alone. Yes, we put our own human effort, but God provides the grace to help us become saints and attain our goal of sanctity. We cannot take pride even in our own state of holiness, if you want to put it that way. Okay? Second, whatever good we have, God gave it to us. So let's be grateful for that. Okay? We have to recognize and acknowledge that whatever good we have is a gift from God. Number three, whatever assets, perfections that we have are only a reflection of the perfections of God. The, the perfections of every creature are reflections of the perfections of God. We cannot lay claim to this as something being purely and entirely our own doing. That would not be true. And therefore, that's not humility. That's pride. Okay. And number four, be grateful. Be grateful to God for everything. Gratitude is an expression of humility. A grateful soul is a humble soul. So one of the prayers, one of my favorite things to pray about, really, is always, thank you, thank you, thank you. Is always gratitude towards God. I hardly pray for anything for myself. I don't even remember what I pray for for myself, really, besides asking for pardon for my own sins. The bulk of what I pray for is a prayer of thanksgiving for everything that God has given us, given me personally, and giving every one of us. And then I pray for everybody else's intentions, everybody else's need for grace, everybody else's petition. But Gratitude is a very good expression of humility and we should make it part of our prayer all the time to pray for, uh, uh, to give thanks to God for everything we have. Learn to humble yourself. Otherwise, if you don't learn to humble yourself, God will do it for you and he will put you down. He will humiliate you. Well, in a sense, okay? God is not going to do that uh, uh, to spite you or to punish you, but sometimes God will send you lessons that will, in the end, achieve that goal of making you humble if you don't do it yourself. Because remember, the greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever tries to pop, uh, uh, 
puff himself up and think so highly of himself more than he <laughs> more than he deserves will be humbled by who <laughs> who do you think is going to do that to you right well god is going to try to help you to be humble god is going to try to provide you opportunities to be humble and you know what? In my experience, it's always painful. <laughs> it's always painful if, if God has to force you to be humble. So it's better that you humble yourself. It's better to practice humility on your own and try to acquire this virtue on your own. Of course, again, still with the grace of God because we are not really going to acquire it all on our own strength. Right? But we at least have to have the desire and disposition to want to be humble. Otherwise, we will be humbled against our will and against our own desires. And look at the, the flip side. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. See? Whoever lives up so this beautiful virtue of humility and humbles himself and learns to recognize God's work in you. Well, God is going to exalt you. God is going to reward you here on earth and, of course, in heaven eternally. Okay? And we have plenty of other stories regarding how God has promised to reward people who are faithful to him. Okay? And faithful particularly uh, in living up to the expectations and virtue of humility. So let's learn to be humble. This time of Lent is a very, very good time to acquire a virtue. And maybe the virtue of humility should be at the top of the list. Okay? Top of the list. Virtue of humility. Okay. That's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Will Ava say goodbye? <laughs> no. She's busy. Okay. Well, anyway, have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oh, Ava's really just very busy. <laughs>